Hi, welcome to Luxury and Moderation, where we appreciate the finer things in life without going overboard. Today I wanted to do another little tag video. Um, well, I'm not really sure if it is a tag video, but I've seen a couple of them and I thought it was fun. So it's called Most Liked and Disliked Bag from Each Designer Brand. There are nine brands, which is a lot of brands. So if I'm looking down, that's just because I am consulting my notes, which I have written down here. But I thought we would go in order from what I thought was the easiest brand that I could select these bags from, which was Chanel all the way to the hardest brand, which is LV. And I'll list all the timestamps in the description bar below. Before we get started, if you're new here, hi, my name is Joanne, and every week I upload videos about luxury handbags and other luxury lifestyle products. So make sure you like this video and subscribe below so you don't miss my next video. All right, getting started with Chanel. My most liked bag from Chanel is I'm sorry to be boring, the classic flap. And that is because I do think it is just so gorgeous. Like nothing else compares to how gorgeous, you know, the quilting is. And then you have the hardware CCs. And maybe it's just because I've drinking too much Chanel Kool-Aid, but I think they're gorgeous. I do have the medium size, the jumbo size, and now a walk in the classic design. So I do love that very much. Now, the most disliked bag I'm now easily able to say is unfortunately the Gabrielle bag. So I've explained before how I thought that it would be the perfect bag for me. It's a little bit more edgy with the three different hardware colors um, and it's meant to be worn in many different ways. So it kind of has that cool factor. But after taking a closer look at the Gabrielle bags in store, I really don't like just like the bottom half of it where they have that really smooth, hard shell. Um, it just looks cheap to me. And the longer I look at it, the longer I touch it and feel it and try it on, I just feel like it not very Chanel to me. No offense if you love it, everybody has their own opinions. This is just mine. Now, the second brand that was very easy for me to select most liked and disliked is Hermes. And I can honestly say the Birkin is my favorite bag from Hermes. I look and dream about Birkins every day. So that was very easy for me. Now for most disliked bag, there's actually a lot of styles from Hermes that I think look a little interesting, um, like the Picatin, but I'm going to say that my most disliked design from Hermes is their Lindy bag. And I just don't get it. They have the two handles on the side, and then you have the two leather strap pieces that hook in the middle with a turn lock. And then you have a zipped portion that I think kind of zips like a square. Um, so I just never really understood the design. It looks really hard to get in and out of, even if you left the leather pieces hanging, which I don't think looks good. Um, then you still have the zip part unless you leave that open as well. And then if you're carrying the bag on the two handles, it's like the bag is meant to be folded. Um, so it just looks really complicated and I would never use a bag like that no matter what brand it was from. The next brand would be Dior. And my clear favorite out of Dior is the Dior book bag. So I've raved about, you know, the embroidery and for my dislike bag, my mind went straight to the Dior Bobby bag. Now, when the Dior Bobby bag came out last year and they really were pushing it, first of all, I thought, meh, it's kind of boring. So many brands have shoulder bags that look very similar to that. And the worst part is that I think the CD logo that they put right smack dab in the middle of that bag design makes it look like a pig snout. So that's just what I think about when I look at a bobby bag. Moving on to Gucci, for my most loved brand from Gucci it would have to be the Dionysus line and probably something in like the black leather versus the Gucci canvas. The lion head in the middle of the Dionysus bags are classic and chic and 
exude elegance. And then for the dislike bag, again, similar to what I said about the Dior, um, when I think about the Gucci Marmont bag, uh, it makes me think of a jock strap in the middle. So the way that the front um, kind of like goes down and then goes back up, um, that's just what I think about whenever I see a Marmot bag. I don't know why, uh, but it's just weird having that like part down in the middle um, and nothing's really covering it versus, for example, the Gucci Dionysus where the lion's head does cover that like weird middle part versus like a Chanel where they have the CCs covering like the weird part that goes down. There obviously needs to be that flap part there to close the bag because that's usually where they put either the turn lock or a magnetic closure. But on the Marmot bag, it's just not disguised at all. So it's just like glaring at you in the face like hi i'm a weird little leather flap uh that just reaches down and that's what i think about let me know if you think i'm crazy or if you agree now the next couple of brands are a little bit harder because each of the brands have just so many styles and some of them are seasonal and maybe in and out in a few years so i don't know if i should really count those but it's just harder when you have to look at all the styles. So I really try to look at styles that have been in market for a while. So they're not just like trendy styles that the brand is trying out. So I looked through the websites of all of these brands to really hone in on like a good style. So for YSL, I picked the Kate bag for my most liked bag because I do think it's pretty classic. I do think the YSL logo is beautiful and they put that logo on everything um, and like why not but with the Kate um, it has the tassel portion that makes it you know just look another level of elegant and I've actually tried it on. I considered buying it and I thought the tassels would be really annoying and you know get in the way as I'm trying to reach in and out of the bag, but they made the tassels heavy, like the actual chains are quite heavy. So there is a weight to them and it makes the tassels hang in a very orderly fashion. So it's not like just flying everywhere in the wind. So I do think that was a smart design. Now for the most disliked bag, I did choose their puffer bag which I know can be a little bit trendy, but it's honestly a trend that's gone on for more than a year now. So it seems like people like it, they're gonna keep producing it. To me, it looks not pretty or elegant at all. And I think that's because with the puffer material, it's really hard to get it's symmetrical so like one side might be more puffy than the other side or you know as you're wearing it and it's creasing on maybe the front versus the back more and also the puffiness of the leather is kind of covering their beautiful logo in the middle it just i don't know it makes me feel uncomfortable just looking at it maybe it's the puffy factor um which i don't love um and then it is to the extreme versus like a YSL Lulu, which has a little bit of puffiness, but still more structured uh, stitching for the chevron print. Moving on to Prada. When I think of Prada, I think of the quintessential double bag. So that is a bag that I associate with Prada the most. And, you know, for, you know, 10, even 20 years ago, it's very structured, which I like. And um, it's very classic. Again, they've been producing it. People have been wearing and using that bag as a work bag or like the smaller versions as a very ladylike bag for a long time. So even though I do like Prada nylon as well, I think that's very quintessential Prada. It's also very classic, but they're a little bit more plain. So that's why I'm going with the double bag as my most liked bag from Prada. And then for the most disliked bag, I had originally picked out a different Prada bag, but then I just walked past this in store and it caught my eye as super unattractive. So this is the new Prada Clio bag. 
that is a reissue from their archives and you can see that they're playing with the shape of like their regular nylon reissue and it's just asymmetrical from front to back. The back is longer and ugh, it just makes me feel really weird and the shape is really weird. So I'm going to select this bag as the most disliked bag for Prada, even though it may be seasonal, they may not have it out for super long. We know that they did pull this from the archives. Now moving on to Fendi, which was harder for me to select only because again, I'm not super familiar with the brand and all of the styles that they do. I do have like an inkling of the Fendi brand from the 2010 or so. So I'm going to go more on like what I think is classically this brand. So my most liked bag from Fendi would be the baguette. And I know that they have a ton of iterations of the baguette. So I don't know whether I should pick like a very specific color or size or whatever, but it's just a good bag that I associate with Fendi. On the flip side, for the most disliked bag from Fendi, I am actually going to have to say the peekaboo style because I think it's a very difficult bag to use. It just seems very hard to access the two sides of the peekaboo bag, especially in a smaller size like the XS. Um, first, you have the turn lock in the middle, which you know you can either keep it open or not, which I think it looks a little bit messy if it it's kept open. Um, but then the way the bag um, goes smaller at the top, uh, the opening is very small for both sides. And then you really can't put anything thick in there because, you know, the bag is split in half. Um, the width of the pockets are just, you know, half the size of the bag. Um, so I just feel like it's a little bit clunky. So yeah, that's why the peekaboo bag never really appealed to me. Looks wise, I do think it is quite nice, but again, because of the functionality factor, it's just not my favorite at all. Moving on to Celine, I have talked before about how much I liked their Phantom bag. So the Celine Phantom is a very simple bag, not a lot of design. I feel like Celine is also another brand that is not that innovative. They have a few styles that they iterate on and then they are seem to be experimenting with some other styles randomly um but at least the phantom has classic silhouette elegant curves which i rave about all the time versus the celine luggage which is a little bit more busy you know it looks like a robot um, there's a zipper mouth that really i don't think is that useful because it's so small the celine phantom looks a lot more elegant to me but in terms of my most disliked Celine bag, um, it was very hard to choose because I did have to go through their entire website and familiarize myself with all the styles that they're experimenting with. Um, I did end up choosing the medium 16 style. And I do believe it's a style that's been around longer than a couple years. Um, but I think it's trying to be like a Kelly. It's very Kelly-esque. It's trying to look very ladylike, very structured, but then the closure is very strange. I think they're trying to like make it a little bit different and differentiating itself from the Kelly in some ways. So they made it vertical and that's just a little bit too out of the box or too different because most bag closures that I'm used to seeing are not vertical and it looks very hard to get in and out of with the flap part, with the turn lock closure, with the extra stripe in the middle to add a little bit more design, but also it looks very random and unnecessary. So I didn't like that. Finally, last brand, Louis Vuitton. This was very, very hard because they have so many bag styles and I looked through their entire website and there were so many on my like list that I liked and there are so many on the list that I didn't like. So to really narrow it down to one in each 
category. Here are my final thoughts. <laughs> So I actually really love the Pachette Matisse, which I own, the Tivoli, which is discontinued, but I own it. So again, just love the styles that I ended up with. So very happy about that. Ultimately, I settled on the Neverfull and Empreant leather as my most liked LV bag. I'm a tote bag person. I love tote bags. I've always wanted a Neverfull. Um, I think they're really useful. People rave about them. And then I think the Empreant leathers look very elegant. So those two things together is like the perfect match, right? Now, my most disliked bag from LV, again, was very hard. There's a lot of styles, actually, that I'm not a huge, huge fan of. Um, I never really liked the twist bags. I don't like the lock me bag. And I feel like the vanity bags, which I know a lot of brands make vanity bags, but LV, you know, has a lot of vanity bags to choose from. Not a huge fan of any of those. Um, I just think, you know, having the zip around the side is hard to get in and out of to use as an actual bag versus if you use it on your vanity as much like it was supposed to be used. Ultimately, I settled on the Petite Mall Supel bag because it's just so weird to me. It has a zip in the middle and then it has one handle. So first of all, it's already asymmetrical, which, you know, I like symmetry. I like order and structure, <laughs> as I have explained. And then you have the extra corner design. Um, it's just a little bit too busy at that point. So all of those factors together that I dislike in one bag is just, I guess, the lowest of the low for me. So we finally reached the end of all of the brands. Let me know if you agree or disagree with me in the comments below. I would love to hear your thoughts as well. If you would also like to share your most liked and disliked bags from these brands, feel free to tag yourself and do a video or leave your list in the comments below. I would love to see. Thank you guys for watching and spending your precious time with me. I really, really appreciate it. Remember to like this video, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss my next video. Can't wait to see you in the next one. Bye!